Good morning again, church. Uh, really thrilled this morning to be able to spend some time on the chairs uh, with uh, Steve Riddle. Uh, just a, a little bit of an uh, introduction. Uh, but before I introduce Steve, uh, for those who may be visiting or uh, new to coming along here uh, to uh, One Hope, every sort of five to six weeks, we regularly uh, grab someone uh, from our congregation uh, just to tell the story, their story, and uh, how it links to us as a, as a church even uh, today. Um, and for, for those who uh, know Steve, uh, he's been in this church for a number of years and you're going to hear some of his story. But I love the fact, that, and we do this regularly when we tell stories, that there is something for everyone in this. There really is. There is gold in hearing the stories from our church community. There really is. So Let's put our hands together for Steve, who's with us this morning. You're much loved in this church, Steve. You're a pastoral elder and have been for a number of years. You're a former youth pastor here back a long time ago, a worship leader, you're a school teacher, you're head of middle school at Christian College when I was a teacher there, uh, you're husband to uh, Heather Riddle for, I think, 47 years. Um, you have three adult sons, uh, Joel, Paul and Mick. Uh, you're a poppy to six grandchildren and you've attended uh, this church, uh, One Hope, uh, since the 70s and you're part of a very popular singing group too in the 70s that I'd never got to see because I was not even born uh, or, uh, <laughs> when this group was around. But this, tr- this group travelled the world. Maybe, Vic- <laughs> maybe Victoria, <laughs> just Victoria. And uh, just tell us a little bit about this group. I'm glad my sons aren't here this morning because when you bring up the past, it's like yuck to them. But this was a group of 45 to 50 young Christian people who, who formed a gospel singing group and toured churches and rallies and oh. bringing the gospel. And Steve, whereabouts are you? Hang on, see if anyone no, can spot those don't hairdos. Start this, Mark. How's the hairdos? There's some good mullets. Mate, surely we can get a close-up up the back, guys. Any close-ups? No, don't. Oh, there he is. Oh. Yeah. Come on. I think I look beautiful myself. That's a beautiful, luscious mullet, isn't it? Where's it gone? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that, that, tell us about that group. And they had a bit of, that was a pretty significant time for you. Yeah, very significant time. I, it doesn't tell my past in the sense of that's a Christian group which were involved in churches and things. My history is far more than being just involved there, coming through a church system and becoming a Christian and, and going on from there. So it was a group of, you know, we've seen baptism here today. I've got, God is in control and God is the one who orchestrates our lives. And I was in this group. When I first started this group, I wasn't a Christian. And, uh, and again, the, it's almost a picture. When I look back now, after all these years, I was involved in the footy club, very heavily involved in football and sport, very much so, with everything that went along with that. So you've got the two lives. It's like the the old life and the new life being focused in front of me and I went through a journey of, of finding out who God was. Two of my old, old brothers become Christians and in our family that was a no-go zone. I often talk about coming from the other side of the tracks and for them to become a Christian got me thinking. Because you could see in their life, you often used to hear this, people say, I could see something in their life that was different. And that was the case with, in the football club I was going through and, you know, getting smashed and, and doing things that you're not proud of and, and that, that whole culture raised the question of what is really real? Is this what life... The question that hit me back then was, is this what life is all about? And God at that right time brought this group into my, into my life and started... God was so beautiful and gentle, especially to me, 
But he never at any time forced a situation on me to really come to him. He was almost letting me walk the path I had to walk. And Mark, I'm, I'm a firm believer in that even with the school and the kids. I believe there's a time in our lives God is, is planning all things and his hand is always there. But the thing is, that I believe there comes a special time in each one of our lives where God starts to zero in and it's almost an anointed time in our lives where he is wanting us to to seek him off our own volition. Amazing. So that time in your 20s was pretty significant. So growing up, uh, you were a Geelong boy. I think there's a photo of you at Hearn Hill Primary School as a youngster. I think you're in the, got the, uh, I think you're the second, first row, um, second on the uh, left there, uh, which is which is great. And then uh, you came to faith in your 20s. You talk a bit about that. Mm. But then through the time in the 80s, you were a part of a significant moment, mm. well, not just a moment, a significant era mm. of our church where a lot of people came mm. to faith and you were a part of our, the youth ministry back mm. then. If you'd share a bit about that time, I think there's a photo as well we've got mm. as you now as a young adult. I'm not sure if you're early married. Um, I think you're there on the end, got the hands in the pockets, you're looking relaxed, you're looking chilled out there, Steve. Well, that was our first church camp from Nicholas Street days, right back and there was, that's probably the church. So, uh, just beginnings. And I guess looking at Nicholas Street, Pastor Stuart Ray, Reverend Stuart Ray, came to our to the church. And that's what drew a lot of young people because he was staying to preach the word in such a way it was drawing people to the church. And uh, I found in the 70s what happened in my life after becoming a Christian. And that was a significant thing because to me, I'm a very emotional person. So God made it that I would trust him in his word, not in how I felt. For a while there, it was going back and forth, depending on how I felt. Whether I, you know, In the early days of becoming a Christian, you think you're up and down like a yo-yo, whatever. At Nicholas Street back then, the thing called the charismatic movement which was an expression that God brought across the churches around the world of a greater freedom and a greater understanding and a greater empowerment of the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And for us, that was like, for me, it was like a light going on in my spirit that started to say, because coming from the other side of the tracks, I questioned everything in the church. Why we do this? Why do we do that? and trying to discern where's life and where's just religion. But again, to hear the, the Holy Spirit is a person. It was like people coming out of an older generation, what's all this? Because you used to say, hear people say, in the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. And if you ask someone, well, what's the Holy Spirit? Oh, it or what or how or why? But we have been privileged since the 70s at our church they have the Holy Spirit express himself in ways and means that have shown us that God is more and who God is and he glorifies the Father and he empowers us to be the people. So when you're like that, you're sitting there this morning and you may be going through the worst time in your life and you feel as though God has deserted you. God's spirit within you is a reservoir of power and love and grace that will sustain you. And God teaches you these things as you go through. So we just saw phenomenal growth in the church, young people. And that's why this church has had a call of worship and the word over it. That's why this church has always drawn a lot of young people because God has put a special calling upon it in its ministry. So so good. Love that picture of a reservoir. That's uh, really rich, Steve. Thanks for sharing that. And for you, prayer is something that you've learned a lot about. I know you're first to say, uh, you know, it's not hasn't been easy. Um, but just uh, share a little bit about what you've learnt uh, around prayer. I'll just hedge that with the proviso that God is planning and working within you 
to become more and more like Jesus. And when I first became a Christian, I, I got a lot of my good feelings from doing things, from getting pats on the back. And because of my insecurity, God teaches all about yourself. Talks about how you feed yourself and how he wants to be the source in your life to do those things. But again, just to, to see God's spirit touch us in such a way that makes the difference is, is what it's all about. And uh, I guess with prayer, Tim Edwards was here for a senior pastor and he said to me one day, I want you to head up prayer in the church. And that was a God moment because I realised, I just laughed. It was just a spontaneous. I said, of all the people in this church who you're asking to head up prayer would be probably the one that struggles with prayer the most, doesn't have a freedom in that, would not necessarily go first to that or try and fix a problem first, that God stopped me and took me out of my comfort zone because he wanted to centre me in on what it was he had for me in prayer. And that's where this whole thing with the Holy Spirit, it's been a journey. Like there's so much has happened and the faithfulness of God and the songs we've sung this morning have been so spot on and what God is doing. But see the faithfulness of God and, and just seeing it happen in your own life, so many things, but uh, I just think, well, God, the Holy Spirit within me, my journey at the moment, don't think you're finished. All you oldies up the back, we ain't finished yet. <laughs> We've got so much to give, and I, I just think the key is tapping in to the power of the Holy Spirit Doing less physically, more spiritually, prayer, and bringing anointed words. And part of that for me has been moving into the area of, um, you know, what would you say, prophecy? An area that, you know, I've always felt it. I used to come and sit up the back there when God first started working on me in this whole prayer thing. And I'm sitting there, and every Every second Sunday, I looked where I sat. You could see a clear line to someone, and I felt God say to me, oh, you need to go and pray for this person. This is what you're going to pray about. Now, I don't know about you, but that frightens the living daylights out here. And I think part of being a Christian, you've got to have the living daylights frightened out of you quite a bit to get you off your backside and, and get involved in the things of God. But going and speaking and praying for those people, God has started, and I said, does that mean anything to you? And they'd confirm it. So God was gently leading me in, gently leading me in to seeing what he could do by the power of his spirit. Today, this year, we're looking at this year, and listen to Matt, it was great. What has God got for us? I just sense within my spirit there's, there's so much change going to come. It's almost as if God has said, you know, the, with the wineskins, you know, God is going to bring new wine and the old wineskins will not hold it. And God has got us here today in the excitement of this moment to captivate your heart. To captivate your heart and say, I am not finished with you yet. There is a desire... There is a beautiful deposit of the Spirit of God in you that you cannot deny. And God is saying, I want you to embrace that even more. I want you to hear the voice of the Spirit. I want you to understand the power of the Holy Spirit. I want you to walk in the power of the Spirit each day. None of us have arrived, but the excitement is to, to walk in a journey that is going to see the Spirit of God work through you not you do something. It's not about you or me. It's about the purpose of God for your life. And so prayer to me, I sit here this morning so I'm looking forward to this year because there is that something of the Spirit of God is wanting to explode and, and give you, for you to take that old wineskin and say, that's not going to do it. It's not going to make it this year. The old ways are gone. The ways of the Spirit will be fresh and new and will blow across this place in, in ways that you would never... If you're holding onto the wineskin and trying to stuff the wine in there, it's not going to work. 
God is looking for a heart which is a wineskin new and open, ready to be filled by his spirit. Yeah, so good. Great pictures. So powerful, Steve. For someone that's here this morning, uh, that sense of feeling like, look, I'm not sure if God, how God can use me. Uh, there's been some stuff in my life, in my circumstances, and I'm sitting here feeling quite uh, useless. What would you say to someone that's feeling that way? Can I just say, it's not about you, it's about God. And sometimes we've got to avoid the trap of self-pity. How many times have I come to church and said, nobody cares, nobody loves me, nobody understands what I'm going through. I'll see who comes and talks to me. Nobody. You ever notice that experience? Nobody. So you go out even more crushed. That's half the problem. The other thing is understanding who God is. Understanding... God loves you. He does, he, there's a word here for someone this morning. God has not forgotten you. God is pursuing you again. And it's coming to that time. You know in your spirit, God is stirring up things, but you can't put, a, put them into place yet. Trust him. Open up your heart. And my motto has always been, if God is moving, I want to be in the front line where the action is. Get it off your backside and step out of what you've been into something new that God wants to do with your life. But for that person, God loves you so much. And sometimes you don't feel like that. But God is there and his spirit within you. It's not about another motto, serve, give, be a giver. If you've got a thing above your life, be a giver, not a taker. Give and give and give and, and get involved in these ministries. Get involved because then God's spirit can direct you so much more easily. As you offer yourself up to him, his spirit will guide you. And I look back in my life and see all the little things. I used to call myself the, the fill the gap man because leadership would ask me to fill. Oh, can you fill that for a while till we get someone to do that? Can you fill that? But God's plans are far more greater than that. But to that person... Let God today touch your heart and let you know that he loves you. It's all about him and his purpose. And when your mind starts to change its attitude and look, this is about God, then you'll soon come out of that and find a place to serve. But be a goer, get in, get in and get involved. It's great, Steve. And in terms of you as well, I know something that you love is, is uh, getting, being an encourager to the next generation. Uh, I've been a part of this church for a number of years and you've many a time come alongside me and a lot of uh, my generation and then the generation younger. And now you as, a, as Poppy uh, as well, seeing you with your grandkids and, and the way you are. Why does the next generation matter? It matters because God's purpose is such that he's planned everything out. And when you look at our life, I can only give a scattergun approach to my life, yet there's been a, such an intricacy in planning, even before I was born, to where I am now and where I'll be in the future. And I guess God has put something within me that I've never felt like leaving this place. And so I've realised there has been a call, like these, these words we use. God has said to me, you are better here. Others will come and go, but you will be here. And one of the things he's given to me is the fact that I get the greatest buzz in my Christian life out of seeing someone else take a step forward. And, and that's why I think selflessness... And understanding a little bit more about the purpose of God will expend yourself. Jesus came to expend himself to save us. And so today, if you seem to be in a rut, perhaps that might be a clue for you that unfortunately you've slipped into something that you want to come out of. But God today is visiting in power. But I just, with the young people, I've always loved young people. I always felt because you could... When I did the youth work, you could challenge them with anything. And they would respond. Like the enthusiasm 
and the joy and the fun you know, that you could have was just overwhelming. And sometimes in churches, we get a bit stale and starchy and, you know, you know, you say something joyous and somebody, you've got long faces looking at you. So, you know, what are you talking about? But again, with God has chosen this church to be a youth church which know, and, the, and the, the older people in it, like me, have such a role to foster and encourage the next generation. God has brought new... Have you realised that God's brought a new generation of leaders into this church? Pastors and things. You see all these changes you vote at church meetings with. But God has put it into place his plan. And he's bringing forth a new generation. And I would encourage you today... Get in the front line, no matter how that is expressed, and serve God with all your heart. Yeah, wonderful, Steve. Such a gift you are to this church, your encouragement and your heart, your journey. Uh, we talked a little bit about prayer. I'm going to ask you to, to pray in a second for for us. And there may be those uh, that you mentioned as well, uh, that even you mentioned about those who may feel that they've, they're forgotten. But also just on my heart, Steve, and I know we talk about the next generation, that we have a lot of parents here. Uh, and, we, and being a parent can be challenging for if, you t- if you've got teenage kids or young adult kids or young kids. Uh, I'd love for you to just, uh, yeah, be able to uh, pray into our church at this time for those parents as well in this, uh, in this time. That'd be great. So I'm going to invite our worship team to come on uh, back and uh, we're just going to um, spend, a, spend a bit of time as Steve leads us uh, this morning uh, in prayer. But I, I'd be great as well to acknowledge Steve this morning. Let's put our hands together for Steve. <laughs> Like I said, I've known you for a long time, Steve, and I love listening to you share. There's so much wisdom, there's so much gold, uh, and uh, we're really looking forward to the future and know that God's going to continue to use you uh, as your generation as well to impart and encourage. So uh, let's spend some time in prayer. And while when Steve, we're going to stand, and I invite you to also stand with us this morning. Father, we just thank you for your presence with us right now. And Father, when we walked through the doors this morning, there was such a sense of the Spirit of God hovering in this place. And Father, we reflect on the things that have been shared. The Amy's word about her nephew, uh, the baptism, the Word of God which has been brought. What should our response be to a a God who has his hand upon your life? And I want you to realise right now in the name of Jesus, we're going to ask his Holy Spirit to come and to fill each one of us, to have hearts that are open. And Father, this morning as we come, we look at the year ahead. We look at the way in which you've drawn us and led us. And Holy Spirit, I just ask in the name of Jesus that your spirit, I want you to open up your heart. Where God's spirit is, I want you to open up your heart and and let him speak and fill that part of your life like you've never known. Just sense the power of God, that faith would be injected and life would be injected again into your life. Where there has been death in your experiences, I pray for a resurrection of the life of Jesus in your life and speak life into you this morning. Be filled with the Holy Spirit afresh today. Let His Spirit just hover over you, just fill you. And Father, we just ask, I just pray for those who are here for the first time and had, don't know. Father, thank you that you've brought them. Thank you that they're here, they're listening. 
And Father, I just lift them up to you this morning in the name of Jesus. And Father, I just ask that your spirit would just dwell with them. Maybe today is the day God has got you to a point in saying, how about I come into your life and show you what living is all about. Show you what it is to find the, your purpose within my purpose. So Father, move in the hearts of those people. Give them courage to keep seeking you. And Father, I pray for the parents of kids. Father, so much is trying to get to our kids. And each one of us here have a responsibility to stand on the outer wall and to lift up holy hands and say, no more. But Father, we protect those that you've placed within our care. Father, I pray for parents who are coming to a point where, Father, kids will drive you to the point of distraction. I just pray for it, uh, the power of your spirit to be released in endurance, in long suffering and long and patience. But Father, most of all, in wisdom to know what to say and when to say it. Father, let your anointing fall upon our children. Let it come in the name of Jesus today. And Father, we just thank you this morning that as we, we bow, we, we just want to say thank you. We want to bring it, lift our hands and praise you, Father, because you're our God. And we want to just take this moment just to thank you. Thank you that you're doing a work in some people's lives, Father. Those that have come in in death will walk out with life. And Father, this morning I just pray in Jesus' name, God, thank you. Thank you for your grace. Father, I ask that blessing upon everyone here, even those that feel they don't deserve it. Father, you're, you would just draw them. Just draw them by your Spirit. This in Jesus' name this morning.